On May 8th, a Macedonian political party known as VMRO DPMNE achieved a landslide victory in presidential and parliamentary elections. While generating little US or European media interest, this seismic development could reverse a foreign orchestrated colour revolution sparked almost a decade ago, which put Skopje on the EU and NATO path. Getting there required rampant corruption and criminality, and a locally despised change of the country's name. British intelligence was central to that campaign, with veteran MI6 operative Charles Garrett stirring up trouble on the ground and coordinating with opposition actors. He had an evidently intimate bond with a crooked, high-profile local prosecutor who used illegally obtained and heavily tainted wiretap evidence to wrongfully indict and blackmail scores of Macedonian politicians, entrepreneurs and journalists. Garrett appears to have been in a position to improperly profit from this relationship. London operates a dedicated programme known as Global Britain in the West Balkans. Leaked documents related to the effort reveal it is concerned with insidiously influencing the composition of local governments and legal and regulatory environments to advance British interests while filling regional security, intelligence and military forces with hand-picked British assets. As one leaked file states, MI6 does not tolerate regional opposition to its agenda and will readily deploy cloak and dagger connivances to neutralise any and all local resistance. In contexts where elite incentives are not aligned with Britain's objectives and values, an approach that seeks to hold elite politicians to account might be needed. We can build relationships and alliances with those who share our objectives and values for reform. It is critical that the media have the capacity and freedom to hold political actors to account. What transpired in Macedonia over the past decade provides a brutal demonstration of what befalls governments and officials in the Balkans who do not share Britain's objectives and values, and how they are held to account. So too does the 2020 coup in Kyrgyzstan, where Garrett set up shop next after leaving Skopje. Following Russia's March 2014 reunification with Crimea, NATO's efforts to expand in the former Yugoslavia became turbocharged. Alliance membership was imposed upon Montenegro, despite near-universal public opposition, in 2016. Achieving this feat required sustaining a corrupt, savage, pro-Western dictator in power for almost two decades and an elaborate connivance whereby anti-NATO opposition actors were jailed on bogus charges of colluding with Russian intelligence to overthrow the government based on bogus CIA and MI6 supplied evidence. Similar subterfuge played out in Macedonia, which signed a membership action plan with NATO in 1999. While slightly more supportive of NATO membership than Montenegrins, the local population near unanimously opposed changing the country's name, which Greece, the EU and the US made a prerequisite for joining. The VMRO government, then led by Nikola Gruevsky, pledged Macedonia would always be called Macedonia. So a Western orchestrated coup was put into motion. In February 2015, opposition party SDSM's leader Zoran Zaev began regularly dropping what he and the media branded bombs deeply damaging wiretaps of private conversations between prominent Macedonian officials, business people, journalists and judges. The tape seemingly implicated Gorevsky and his ministers in serious crimes, including murder. Zayev claimed the illegally captured recordings were passed to him by whistleblowers. Gorevsky countered that the releases were supplied by foreign intelligence services with the objective of forcing an early election. Subsequent investigations exposed how SDM deceptively edited and spliced these leaked recordings to grossly distort their contents and falsely incriminate government officials. For example, one bomb was extensively doctored to make it sound like VMRO chiefs conspired to cover up the 2011 murder of a young Macedonian in Skopje by a senior police officer while shielding them from justice. The unexpurgated tape indicated they were in fact shot by the killing and wanted the culprit to be severely punished. It was not until four years later that the truth was revealed, however. Upon release, Zayev's bomb sparked widespread outcry in Macedonia, prompting hundreds of thousands of citizens to take to the streets, voicing righteous rage at VMRO. Openly called the colourful revolution by participating citizens and NGOs and English language media, the EU and US duly stepped in and brokered an agreement under which Gorevsky resigned and new elections were held. SDM scraped into office via a fragile coalition, then set about laying the foundations of Macedonia's name change in explicit service of NATO membership with tens of millions of dollars in assistance from intelligence cut out US aid. Parliamentarians were also blackmailed, frequently using the illegal wiretap intercepts and bribed into passing unconstitutional and highly controversial reforms, allowing Skopje to be rebranded North Macedonia without public support or even the president's sign-off. A sham referendum, boycotted by most citizens, was also cynically staged. 
At last, North Macedonia was formally inducted into NATO in March 2020. Alliance officials have since repeatedly made clear they consider Bosnia and Herzegovina joining to be all but inevitable. This is despite 98% of Bosnian Serbs opposing membership due to NATO's central role in the criminal destruction of Yugoslavia during the 90s. There are covert British efforts to promote NATO and Serbia too, despite over 80% of the population opposing joining. In August 2013, an individual named Charles Garrett was appointed London's ambassador to Macedonia. His express brief was to help the country achieve its goals of joining NATO and the EU. Active Measures has been informed by multiple knowledgeable local sources that he was instrumental in the colourful revolution, distributing cash to NGOs and activists involved in the unrest from his diplomatic pouch while attempting to get government supporters on board. Public records strongly suggest Garrett is a lifetime MI6 officer. His lengthy career in London's diplomatic service includes spells in Cyprus, Hong Kong, Switzerland and Taiwan, all key nuclei of intelligence gathering and cloak and dagger action for Britain's foreign spying agency. He was also posted to the Balkans in the latter half of the 1990s, when the region became a veritable MI6 playground. Under the agreement brokered by the EU and the US, a special prosecutor's office was created to investigate officials over serious crimes supposedly revealed by, by the illegal intercepts. A previously unknown prosecutor from a small Macedonian border town, Katika Yaneva, was selected to run the office. While the SBO was supposed to prosecute SDM activists, including Zaev for releasing the intercepts, this never materialised. Meanwhile, any and all Western officials visiting Macedonia made sure to visit SBO headquarters and get snapped with, with Yaneva. Garrett was, of course, among them. Initially, Western journalists treated Yaneva to multiple fawning profiles. The British press was particularly smitten. The Financial Times referred to her as Macedonia's Beyoncé. The BBC dubbed the special prosecutor and her two primary assistants Charlie's Angels, claiming the trio were the scourge of Macedonia's political elite and heroines of the street protest now rocking the tiny Balkan nation. A lengthy USAID-funded documentary featured her staff mocking their targets via phone between discussing who to jail next over pizza and cigarettes. That broadcast has been removed from the web, and virtually no trace of its existence can be found online today. This may be because in June 2020, Yaneva was jailed for seven years for corruption. Her crime-fighting crusade was from the very beginning an obscene partisan fraud. Along the way, she secretly enriched herself through a variety of unscrupulous criminal means. The special prosecutor's true objective was destabilising the VMRO government and discrediting its supporters by association. Yaneva's targets were often indicted on ludicrous charges. For example, at one stage, Prime Minister Gruevsky was accused of abuse of office for commissioning the construction of two Chinese highways. Prosecutors charged he had improperly benefited from the deal, not financially, but because he would receive a popularity boost if the highways were actually completed on time. Elsewhere, a pro-VMRO female journalist was accused of tax fraud for writing off laundry as a business expense and resultantly sub subjected to much misogynistic mockery in SDSM-affiliated media. More gravely, the owner of an independent news site committed suicide after being pressured to turn state witness by the special prosecutor following early morning police raids targeting him and his family. Cases brought against the owners of government supporting TV stations Cytel and Nova shifted their editorial line in favour of SDM and led to the latter being closed outright. In its place, the rabidly pro-SDSM One TV was launched by an eccentric Macedonian media personality named Bo Boyan Jovanovsky, also known as Boki 13. Publicly, Boki 13 used his station to relentlessly promote the SDSM-led government and the special prosecutor's work, with Yaneva a frequent guest on its assorted factual and entertainment programmes. In private, he would extort wealthy business people indicted by Yaneva or somehow caught up in the illegal intercepts, promising to make their legal troubles go away in return for lavish advertising buys on One TV or sizeable donations to his charity, International Association. None other than Charles Garrett sat on its board. By the time these facts became public knowledge and Yaneva and, and Boki 13 were in prison, Garrett was safely extracted from Skopje, having been appointed British ambassador to Kyrgyzstan. Almost immediately, a revolution erupted in Bishkek. Mass demonstrations, ignited by reports of vote rigging in the October 2020 parliamentary election, culminated with the military storming the president's compound and removing him physically from office. In February 2022, a Kyrgyzstan government-affiliated newspaper openly accused Garrett of operating a fifth column in Bishkek. 
It also alleged that in the lead up to the 2020 vote, he, along with US State Department representatives, met with local journalists and bloggers, offering them enormous sums of money to identify electoral violations, such as vote rigging, and document official pressure on media outlets and civil society groups. Garrett purportedly promised them top-of-the-range broadcasting equipment to increase their audience reach. Not long after publication, he returned to London. Garrett has kept a low profile ever since and now occupies a cushy role overseeing the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. Nonetheless, in September 2023, he submitted written evidence to a British parliamentary inquiry investigating London's engagement in Central Asia. He advocated a number of means to exploit disruption caused by Moscow's renewed invasion of Ukraine to undermine the region's historic, economic and political ties with Russia and China and shape the future of these countries according to British interests. When British Foreign Secretary conducted a much-publicised tour of Central Asia in May 2024, he followed Garrett's proposals to the letter. The ambassador's legacy visibly endures in Macedonia today too. In March 2016, colourful revolution protesters attempted to burn down the president's office after 56 individuals indicted by the special prosecutor were pardoned. The premises were transformed into the headquarters of UK aid, a now defunct British government agency intimately implicated in the neoliberal pillaging of Ukraine. This role included running covert communications campaigns on Kiev's behalf, promoting the destruction of workers' rights locally. It is likely the organisation was engaged in similar skullduggery in Skopje after Garrett rode into town. VMRO's return to government at last offers Macedonian citizens an opportunity to halt the operations of all US and British intelligence fronts and cutouts on operating on their soil and reclaim foreign conquered territory. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.